Okay, I, 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 I think I'm ready. Hallelujah. I've only played very few Pokemon in my life. Um, my Pokemon, like, life ended in Pokemon Heart Gold. Period. It only started around Pokemon Diamond, so I have a very short lifespan. But it's, I'm really glad that I got, by random, the Pokemon Diamond game as my first run. Because, like, um, I shit you not, this game is, like, my, um, it's my original game, you know. DNA17. You, you can be Marcus Tyson? I do like a challenge, and Pokemon games did not interest me at one point because I ended up, like, the last few days of me playing Pokemon was playing Pokemon Factory, or Battle Frontier Factory, on and on and on, or playing that play, f like, the play field in Heart Gold. I wasn't enjoying the normal playthrough at all, and when I noticed that, there was no incentive for me to ride the Pokemon Black, like, let's play Pokemon Black thing. So I decided that I'm gonna go out of my way to figure out a rule set that I can enjoy Pokemon in a difficulty level that meets my age in gaming. Not not my like actual age, my age in how many years I've played video games. I've played video games for about like 15 years now, and I need a challenge if I'm gonna play something like this. So, in a very cliff note fashion, the rule said, please, that you cannot die, first of all. Every death will result in a death counter, and, and a death counter is the worst thing you can get in this mode. But basically, the color you see right over there on the side, can I move forward? <laughs> on that side, that blue color is your friend. When you get a blue color in this um, randomizing thing going on on the side, um, you can perform the move. Ooh, then what if we get red? When you get that red color, it's no good because, well, you can't perform the right move you want to play, uh, perform. That's why. So, how do we determine if you get a blue or red? There's multiple factors. There is the initial level you catch the Pokemon. The higher level you catch the Pokemon at, you will gain more values to a negative side. So, at the beginning of a Pokemon's life cycle, the Pokemon has 100% Rebellion, which means it's got full red, red. When you level up a Pokemon, you gain that level amount worth of, um... Where'd I go? You get that Pokemon's level amount worth of, um, blue value. Add it to your Rebellion pool, which means, say you have a level 5 Pokemon as a starter. A level 5 Pokemon starter will have 5, uh, exponential Exponential, no. Five, five, um, what's the word? Five factorial. Five factorial value, which means five plus four plus three plus two plus one, which equals to 15. Right? Yeah. So, a starter Pokemon will have 15 rebellion value. Every time you level up, you'll get six for level six, seven for level seven, which means at level seven, you'll have 15 rebellion value, red, and 13. Um, non-rebellion value, blue. In addition to that, there's a few more factors that plays into how this Pokemon grows up. Generally, there's only one way to gain blue value. It's only by leveling up. Unfortunately, the level up scales quite well, so if you do get <clears throat> a Pokemon a higher level, if you do grind enough, you will get the level required to bring it to a blue area, but you will never get a 100% um, obli- 100% um, slave Pokemon. That is not a thing that can happen. Now, there's a few more rules I have to explain in a moment. There is a few ways to gain Rebellion value. The first one is Death Counter. So when you do get a death with a Pokemon, you get a random value between 5, I mean, sorry, not 5, 6 to 10 multiply by a Sigma of how many death you have. Not Sigma, sorry. Um... Oh yes, a sigma, yes. So it's a it's a summation, right? Did I say factorial? I didn't mean to say factorial, it's a summation. So it's not um, when you get a level of when you get a Pokemon, you won't get five times four times three times two plus one. It's five plus four plus three, so it's factorial. Never mind about that one. But when you gain a death, it is the summation of how many times you died multiplied by six to ten, randomized. So you could get um, upwards to ten. Rebellion for your first death, 
30 upwards to your second death, and 60 upward to a 6th death, which is very bad, very, very, very bad. Um, I need to mention, like, every Rebellion value is a permanent minus to the Pokémon. You don't want any, if you, if you can. Now, next thing up is a party change. In this Pokémon challenge, you can only have 3 Pokémons upwards. And a 3 Pokémon team, once it is solidified in your inventory or your team, you cannot change them. Until the point that you have three Pokemon, it's pretty much free to go. But once you have three in a team, they are determined as a team. We're given a name to it, probably. Um, and when you want to make a party change, which equates to anything from replacing one Pokemon on a team to just completely replacing the same ex a whole team, which can only mean two Pokemon from a team, but anyway. Once that happens, you need to give every Pokemon that changed teams, which doesn't include Pokemon that were in the Pokemon box. Every Pokemon that changed team will gain 3 multiplied by their level worth of Rebellion value. Which is no fucking joke, so you don't want to have a party change if you can. Like, that means like... Basically, if you make a party change, you remove 3 level ups worth of stat. Anyway, there's one more rule I have to talk about, which is the drug use. Every drug will equate to 3 multiplied by level divided by 10, which means everywhere from 1 to 10 equals to 1 multiplied by 3. 3 rebellion for 1 drug use. Drug use equates to anything used in battle. Anything out of battle will not count. Um, and from level 11 to 20, it's 2 multiplied by 3, so 6. So it's not a very scaling mechanic, but since drug use is pretty much required to beat this game, it's gonna be pretty hard. Um, and finally, uh, stab boost items. This is something I'm pretty much um, wavered on, but um, I think I might implement a rule for now. It's my escape maneuver if I if the rule set I'm using right now is too difficult, but for now I'm going to make them illegal. Much um, homage to Pika Spray Yellow, because he makes it a clear rule set that using battle stat boost items are pretty much like cheating in Pokemon at this point. So it feels like when you're doing a hard difficult mode, I think those items should be removed from the game entirely. Okay, so we have Pichu, Azuril, and Horsey. Unfortunately, the only Pokemon we have right now is Toxiclang, and Toxiclang is a poison type. We needed a poison type here, and the um, unfortunate fact is um, there's not a whole lot of poison type starter Pokemons. <sighs> this is something I didn't want to happen, but since the banjo Tui run took six episodes, I can I have to do this episode today. Okay, I'm gonna go in the judgment that there's a lot more water types in general. I have researched how many Pokemon types there are in general, and I know that electric types are a lot more scarce than water types. So I'm gonna go with Pichu. Again, I'm not going to be using this Pokemon for the entirety of the game. Those three, Drug Youth, Party Change, and Death Counter, are the main way you lose. This game is gonna go off of my own interpretation of a dungeon in a boss uh, gym leader. I always didn't like how you can backtrack from a gym leader when you're in the middle of a trainer fight. And, uh, er, rather, after a trainer fight, correct? I always didn't like the fact of Pokemon. I always thought that the challenge of a gym leader should be that you have to fight in a blitz. Sure, you could use your items in the middle of it, but you should still be forced to fight in, like, a blitz manner, right? That's what I thought, at least. You cannot back out of a gym once you go into it. You can use healing items, it's not gonna be a full, like, run that you have to continue on. But, you do have to commit to it once you go into it. You can back up, back out from a gym, but you do get a penalty of getting 5 multiplied by death counter to all your party. It's going to be a proxy death basically, where if you do get an actual death, number one, you get additional death counter, which means every death after that will have another factor added to the summation, which is really, really bad. So if you do back, uh, and two, you only get five multiplied, not six to ten. So backing out of a gym is possible, but it's really a last minute, minute measure because it's still very, very bad. Um, so yeah. That's basically it. Now, there's one more mechanic in this fight, which is refusal. Refusal is different from rebellion, and it's going to be represented by this mark. 
Oh, I guess I didn't really talk about what Rebellion really is. So when you get a red value, the arrow sign next to it indicates which attack the Pokemon does. Um, Rebellion is not that you can't make a move because it's virtually impossible to do. Rebellion is all about the Pokemon doing its own move. And there is a way to cheat through the system because you can give four attack moves that are pretty much good. You can give Flamethrower, Fire Blast, um, Flame Roll, and... Well, Flame Roll is not a very good move. And like, um, Flame Wind, whatever. <laughs> and it, it's basically non-existent, the whole Rebellion rule. So, to compensate for that, in a Pokemon, there can only be, number one, one type attack move per Pokemon. So you can't have two attack moves of the same type. And, additionally, you have to have one non-attack move in your Pokemon. This is only applied when you get to four Pokemon, uh, four moves in a Pokemon. So, before that, you can have whatever you want, as long as you, um... Well, there's not really a way to circumvent that, because you can't lose a move, so yeah. Until you get a four move set. That's going to be applied. And so with a Rebellion, when you get a red value, the arrow will indicate which Pokemon the Pokemon does, and very good timing, the exclamation mark you see right there will indicate the Pokemon decided to refuse making a move. This means the Pokemon is going to refuse, sorry, not refuse to do a move, refuse to engage in the fight. What this means is that the Pokemon is ashamed of fighting whatever it's fighting right now. And um... This becomes a mechanic when we're fighting a Pokemon that is lower level than us. Um, Pokemon wants to fight Pokemon of equal, uh, equal level. And if it's given an enemy that is lower than them, they'll know. And every time they defeat a Pokemon that is lower level than them in a trainer fight, not a um, wild Pokemon fight, it'll gain the level difference value worth of um, Rebellion, uh, not Rebellion, Refusal. And every time a refusal is added to a pool, once we roll the dice for a rebellion, there is a chance that we get a refusal like that. The refusal pool shares the denominator with the rebellion value. So it's a lot more rare to happen, but it's always gonna be on the back of your mind when you're fighting a lower leveled Pokemon. And refusal can be a game ender because once you get a refusal, that Pokemon will be counted as a knocked out. It will not fight, you'll have to immediately change the Pokemon at that point to a different Pokemon. And once every other Pokemon is um, killed in that fight, you cannot use that last Pokemon that refused to fight. And um, so, you're incentivized to have three Pokemon in your team of different level value if you can. At the moment of recording this, I completely forgot that there has been a rule change in the midst of the original playthrough that you'll be watching and I'll show you the moment when I realize that the refusal rule set doesn't exactly work smoothly as I thought it would. When I was fighting a Gloom at a certain location, I got refusal on both my Pokemon and I had to forfeit the match. But it turns out the Gloom kept doing a stat inducing move and the fight went on for like an additional 10 minutes or something and I really couldn't bother doing that every time I get like a double refusal from my two person Pokemon team. It works like a skip a turn in like a board game where you have to use a say you have a defense curl on your Jigglypuff and you have other offensive move on your other slot you'll have to do if you get the exclamation mark a uh, refusal You'll have to use a defense curl three times and do no damage to the opponent. That's the important part. Because refusal is, for the most part, protesting against your own master that you don't want to fight or engage in this unfair uh, way to fight that you're in advantage of because all Pokemon are chival knights, as we come to understand in this playthrough. And um, you still can change the Pokemon and decide not to use that Pokemon anymore. And only in the situation that every other Pokemon is either knocked out, can you bring back that Pokemon that originally refused to fight, wait three turns as another stat inducing move, and then re-engage in the fight. And if you're still alive at that point, God bless you, you have got some luck on your side. But that's how it's gonna work. For the most part, when I'm having a low party, say I have only one Pokemon and I got like two refusal points in the 15 the Rebellion pool, then it's going to happen eventually, and at that point, my choice is to use a stat inducing move three times. If I don't have a stat move at that point, which is quite unlikely, then 
I'll just ignore the rule set for that point. That's how it is, we'll get back to the playthrough. Makuhita or Makunoshita? Um, Makunoshita ka? Hmm, Makuhita is a fighting type. He could be my gold abyss. I'll keep that in mind. We have two potential candidates for next episode. I need to find a poison type though. Um, do I have any Pokeballs? I do not. But um, okay, so assuming you already saw the last run, because this episode is prominently gonna go be about the failed run in the last episode. It's probably gonna be a long episode too. Alright, what do we have? We have Pupitar. That sounds like a bug type. Cool. Meryl, that's not gonna work. And we have Duskull. Duskull is a ghost type, which isn't gonna work. Now here's the thing. I don't know what a pupitar is, but it sounds like a it sounds like a it sounds like a pupa. A pupitar is a ground type Pokemon. Oh god. That's not what I expected, but hey, you know what? We got ourselves you know what? You know what that is? You know what that means? A pupitar is a ground type Pokemon. Ground rock to be specific. Alright, let's see what we get. I mean, I know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be the um, Tyranitar pre-evolution. Which, you know what? I'm down because Tyranitar was my main in um, Pokemon Heart Gold, kind of. I believe. I don't know, maybe it was XD. I, I don't remember. It's been over 10 years. Alright, what do we have? Bite, Leer, Screech, and Sandstorm. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's go. The moveset are not going to be randomized, hence no drill peck chat taught in this game mode. Um, but I did randomize a lot more, where um, Pupitar will have a different special ability than it would usually have, which I believe it would be, um... I believe Pupitar's special ability is... Rockhead? Doesn't take any damage from um, self damage inflicting moves. You know what, I'm not gonna pretend like I know it, how to play the game. At this point, it's been way too long. So yeah, we have a Moon Digger on our side. Let's go. So let's commence the switch of no returning back. Now here's the deal. In order so that I don't circumvent this rule set by having four very good uh, powerful moves, which might as well be like the <laughs> way to go for a uh, rule set like this. Did I just not press the button? Yeah, okay, hold on. Maybe I do that sometimes. From here on out, whenever I don't do the randomization, I'll be punished by giving one additional rebellion point into the pool. So, that one I missed, luckily, so it didn't really count. I missed, luckily. This time, I roll the dice and I get Sandstorm. So, very good. Nonetheless, it's a very hazardous situation, but it does make it a lot more fun. Alright, we got top right, Leer. Not great. <gasps> what the fuck? Oh no! It's lowering around! Pupitar has got the worst ability in Pokemon history. Oh god. Oh god, I gotta I gotta look something up. Ah oh, shit. Oh of course. Of course. Also, we have Leer and Screech. Ah, shit. This isn't gonna work. Ah, crap. You know, so the saving grace is that I haven't named this Pokemon yet. I haven't committed to it, you know? It's a complimentary prize with the game. And I was, I was excited for a moment, but... You see... Maybe if Tyranitar or Bungidasu had the different ability in the real game, it means that I will be able to abandon this awful ability in the upcoming of this Pokemon's evolution. But if it doesn't, which I know it does, Tyranitar has the natural sandstorm ability, so we're good on that part. I used to, um, see, I used to play Tyranitar in, um, 
I don't know which game it is. It might be Pokemon Platinum because I had the double tag team of、um, Garchomp slash Gabrias and Tyranitar slash、uh, Bangiras. So it had the、um, Tyranitar Sandstorm and the、um, Garchomp Sand Evasion move, right? A good team. Pupitar will eventually evolve out of this horrible ability when it evolves into Tyranitar, but Tyranitar evolved at about level 43 if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I'm dead, I'm dying to this Pidgey. I'm dying to a Pidgey who is a type advantage to myself. No, 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 type disadvantage to myself. But I'm losing to it, even though I'm taking one damage at a time, because of this awful, awful Pokemon I've got. Level 55. Level 50 fucking 5. The CDs aren't the rock types. I mean, ground types are what I'm looking for. I mean, let's get serious. This Pokemon is a rock type, not a ground type. In heart. Right? Alright, we got bite. Let's hope we're not loafing around. Oh, come on. One bite. Everybody knows the rules, bastard. They used bite one time during that whole randomization session. It ain't good. So, what happened here was a death. We got our first death, which means a summation of 1 out of 1.、Uh, 1 multiplied by 5 to 10 randomize, which I will use a randomizer on my phone. We have way too much bio going on in the screen, so you have, to, you have to trust me on what the random number I'm gonna get here is. But a death is a momentous occasion.、Uh, let's see what we get 5 to 10, 6 possible values. We got 5, believe me. We're gonna get 5 additional death、uh, rebellion points added to our Pokemon. I'm gonna die. Yes, I did get a slacking,、um, Pupitar. <laughs> Sanagiras, yeah. And it, it, it was unbelievable. The first Pokemon I got was a Pokemon with slash,、uh, whatever you call it, slack. Unbelievable, right? In, in, insane. <laughs> Right, we don't want to go into Jubilee City before we get a Pokemon because that means we're going to engage in our first trainer fight without a Pokemon we can use. It's, it's going to be an instant loss at that point. There's a bird, the rat, um. <gasps> Ooh! That's so big! Oh, I found my destiny! Alright, next time we'll meet you back with some progress. Oh! <gasps>